Hi, I'm Carrie. Welcome. My channel is for middle-aged women who are interested in midlife topics, having a few laughs, and living their best midlife. Today, I want to get serious about perimenopause and how to survive it. If this is information you'd like to hear more about, stick around. I have been through a lot of things in my almost five decades here on earth. And in all honesty, none have been quite as challenging as perimenopause. <laughs> I know this sounds overly dramatic, but to those of you out there going through this, you know I am not being a drama queen. Puberty was a cakewalk compared to perimenopause. Whoever coined the phrase aging gracefully clearly never experienced perimenopause, or the term only applies once you survive it and come out the other end with your sanity and in one piece. There are over a hundred symptoms of perimenopause. And for a lot of women, it would just be simpler to list the symptoms they don't have rather than trying to list all of the symptoms they do. If you are one of those unfortunate women that is plagued with a long list of irritating and sometimes concerning symptoms, and you wonder how you are going to cope until this terrible hormonal roller coaster ride comes to a stop and you finally reach menopause, keep watching. If you're anything like me, your life was cruising along just fine and you were completely comfortable with your existence until you crossed over into your early to mid 40s. Then your life slowly started to go south. Maybe you started to notice random strange things at first. Not serious enough to be concerning, but weird enough to make you stop and wonder. Maybe your periods are all of a sudden coming a few days late or early when they were always like clockwork and always came every 30 days for the last 30 years. Maybe you're finding hair sprouting in places that you don't really want it, or for some odd reason, your moods are all over the place lately. You know something's off, but you just can't put your finger on it. Then as time goes on, those random few symptoms become a list of symptoms and they increase in intensity to the point where it does create a level of concern. You're probably at the point now where you really think you need a doctor because something is clearly wrong and you're worried. The anxiety is kicking in big time now and <laughs> your periods are seriously out of whack. And now all of a sudden you're suffering heart palpitations, dizziness, flushing, trouble sleeping, irritability, hot and cold flashes. Everything itches and your entire body hurts. So you go to the doctor and he or she runs a bunch of tests and then proceeds to tell you there's nothing wrong with you. What? It's perimenopause. Crap. The symptoms are getting worse and more numerous and perimenopause can last anywhere from four to 10 years. How in the world are you going to bear these symptoms for 10 years? You honestly feel like you're broken and falling apart. And quite frankly, some of the symptoms are downright terrifying. Anyone who suffers from heart palpitations or panic attacks can attest to that. At this point, if you're a Google queen like I am, you Google the list of over 100 symptoms and then quickly begin to feel overwhelmed because you come to realize you're already suffering at least 15 of them. Does any of this ring true with any of you ladies? I can tell you that I am one of those people who suffers a long list of symptoms and I have been to the doctor over and over again, including the cardiologist and the neurologist. While it does help ease my anxiety to know that there isn't anything completely serious going on, it doesn't do anything for the symptoms themselves. I was also lucky enough to have one of my hormone tests come back high, indicating perimenopause. So I do have proof that it's likely shifting hormones causing most of my symptoms, and that also helps a bit with the anxiety. 
If you have a doctor willing to do hormone testing or other testing, it might be worth considering. It won't do anything for your symptoms, but it may help decrease your anxiety and alleviate some of the worrying. Please keep this in mind though. If you have your hormone levels checked and they come back normal, please do not start panicking, thinking there's something terribly wrong with you because it's not perimenopause. Because hormone levels are not consistent. They change all the time. So you can have normal hormone levels and still be in the throes of perimenopause. Other than relieving some anxiety by seeing a doctor, how can we get through this perimenopause crap with our sanity? How can we cope with symptom after symptom, possibly for years until we finally reach menopause? For those of us suffering insomnia, heart palpitations, panic attacks, dizziness, flooding and nonstop bleeding, how will we ever make it to menopause in one piece? There are many women who can use hormone therapies to rebalance their hormones and regain some semblance of normalcy in their lives, but there are many, many women, myself included, that cannot pursue this type of a treatment for one reason or another. So what do we do? I wish I could tell you there was a magical remedy out there that would give you back the life you had in your 30s, but there isn't. You can, however, lessen your symptoms and bring them down to at least a tolerable level. Reducing triggers such as caffeine and stress is fantastic for reducing anxiety and heart palpitations. I was not happy to give up my morning coffee at first, I'm not going to lie, but I managed to switch to green tea every morning, which has caffeine, but not as much as coffee, and for me, it is helping. Mind-body techniques such as yoga and meditation are also great for anxiety. And if you can manage to do yoga a few times a week, it might help give you back some of that agility you had in your 30s. Also, eat as healthy as you possibly can. It will not only nourish the body and help it function optimally, but it will also control blood sugar swings, which can really ramp up symptoms such as anxiety, nervousness, dizziness, headaches, and fast heartbeat. Staying as active as possible is also very beneficial. It will help maintain your weight and help improve your sleep. And we all know that sleep problems in perimenopause are a real issue. It will also strengthen the body and help to reduce some of those random aches and pains that seem to spring up all over the place during this stage in life. I know you're probably going to roll your eyes at me when I tell you to drink more water, but staying hydrated is really important. Dehydration can cause a lot of symptoms or exacerbate ones that you already have, such as fast heartbeat, fatigue, headache, and dry skin. And if you haven't already, it might be wise to find a gynecologist who is knowledgeable in perimenopause to follow your perimenopause journey. He or she can keep track of any cycle disruptions or bleeding issues and deal with them promptly so that you don't suffer unnecessarily. I really wish I had a magic bullet to offer all of you and myself. <laughs> Just know you're not alone. There are a lot of us out there suffering this chaotic roller coaster ride right along with you. And there are at least some options to bring your symptoms down to tolerable levels so that you can at least live your life in relative comfort until you reach the end of perimenopause. If you have other suggestions for easing symptoms that you think are valuable, please include them in the comments. It's important for us women to support each other. I hope this video brought you some value. I think it helps to know that you're not alone and that other people understand what you're going through. Please remember, if you would like to be notified when I release new content, subscribe and click the bell. I hope you're all striving to live your best midlives. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.